Hello, the Darkness 344 here, and today uh, we're going to be extending upon this AOU we built in the last video. If you haven't seen that, uh, go check it out. And I'll also uh, try and build a computer around this, and hopefully do like something like a multiplication program, or, or just some sort of program that will actually demonstrate what this can do. But yeah, so uh, with that, let's uh, get on to the video. So the first thing. Uh, we're going to need to change is we we want the uh, the plus uh, we want to be able to block off the different lines over here so we want to either block off a or b and at the moment we just don't really have enough space so i have tried putting uh, it in over here so i've tried just improving upon the normal design and adding a few bits it just really hasn't been working out too well it was almost working but yeah, I think uh, the easiest way to do it is just to rebuild the front portion of the AOU. So we could either use World Edit or we could just do it manually. So over here I've got a fresh copy and what we're going to do is, I think I've left a sign over here for me. Yeah, so we're going to just extend this two blocks back. So uh, all of this section over here will be brought back to sections. Uh, if you really want, you could do this by commands. Or you could even use, if you're in creative, you could use a structure block, which would be slash give at the structure block. And as, as you can see, it's over here. But uh, I'll just show you how to use that. But uh, in this video, I'll just be rebuilding it by hand so you know what to do. Uh, a structure block uh, may require experimental mode. I'm, I'm not too sure. But basically, you, you just place it down and you can like put in your coordinates and stuff like this as, as you can see and it all and you yeah you just you just put your coordinates and then you can uh, name it something click uh, click save once you've put in a name see and then you place down another structure block where you want to load something in and then set it to load and then you could just click put in the name again and then set load like that and of course there's some other features like the you can 3d export and there's there's a lot of cool things you can do with this i'll have to make a full video with this later explaining like certain bits you can do but for now uh yeah i'm just going to be showing how to fix this so the first thing we're going to do is uh, i'm just gonna i don't actually have the decoder over here for these bits but that doesn't matter because i'm going to break this all anyway uh since we're extending it from here all of this section is going to be broken or well use a structure block or commands to shift it over by two blocks but i'll just i'll just rebuild it all so let me just break it all real quick and i'm not going to break this line because we want this for reference and this is a bit counterintuitive breaking everything then rebuilding it and there's a lot of lag for some reason but unfortunately i completely forgot about these bits that you needed them so it's, it's just easier that we rebuild it all. And I can also uh, put in a proper computer that will use out these functions. So like uh, being able to invert only a certain number or being able to uh, plus one a certain number. Because at the moment, the you can use the carry in line, but it'll just add one to whatever operation you're doing. Uh, whereas uh, what we're going to do now is be able to say, I want uh, to add one to A, or I want to add one to B, and not both of them. So that that will just I, I sh once once I finish uh, building it, I'll show you. I'll build a computer as well with this ALU in it, as well. I, of course, I'll put a world download for this this ALU and the computer, and it'll basically show off the different bits uh, with like what you can do. So now that we've broken it all. Uh, we're going to be building it backwards um, this way. So instead of uh, what we did with the other ones where we built it from forward like this way, we'll just do it backwards because uh, that'll mean we have enough space. So the first thing we're going to want to do is extend it out two blocks like this. And this is where we'll be building the circuit. And as you can see, uh, what we can do is, I think we may be able to go down like one like that instead of have to use repeaters because uh, my design was originally gonna you go to blocks like this and then just place a repeater here and a block here and have a piston go down here but i think we may be able to get away 
with uh, bringing it down one block like this. So we have this kind of M shape like this. And this should hopefully work. So I'm going to copy this to every single line like this. So if I just go along like this. And yeah, hopefully I'll, I'll try and write a multiplication algorithm if I do make a computer for this. If it doesn't work, because I'll need to add several things for it, I'll just use a simple, like, I'll just show off some simple program that actually demonstrates it. But yeah, oops. It doesn't really matter too much, I don't think. I've got a piece of duster. So this is what you're going to want to do. Just like an M shape like this. So off of your half adders, the down one block, go up, up, down, up, down, like this. So now that we have this, we're just going to need to actually make the control circuitry. So we're going to go up a few blocks. And if I've done this correct, there we go. So we use a sticky piston like this. So up from this block down here, we go one block, two block, three block, four block, and we place a piston in line with that. And we're just going to do this for all of them. So if I just stretch line out like this, and then we can just place pistons for all of these. Uh, let me see if there's going to be the pistons here. I, I have to just make sure everything's going to be in working order. And then we need, we may need to extend this out several more blocks actually, because if the pistons are over here, yeah, let's, let's just extend this out several more blocks. So for this, I'm going to extend it out. Uh, two more blocks there, one, two, and then we're going to go down like this. And this hopefully should be enough. Let me just try. So we're going to have a line here, line here, and we're going to want to have a line here, and a line here, and the piston is going to be here. All right, there we go. So we extend the original M shape out two more blocks just like this and go down. So this is what we get over here. So from the AOU, down one, up, up, down, up, 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 and down like that and that means we can do these lines here so let me just finish putting in this line over here so it's just going to require sticky pistons all over here like this and of course we'll put in the circuits for them later then we're going to want to make the inverters again so we'll go back like this and down one like this And this is where we make the inverters. So, uh, yeah, let's let's just do that right now. So if I just put redstone down like this, and then I'm going to put blocks on these bits as well. We'll just finish this fully first. Once these blocks are in, we're going to do the same thing as we did on the inverters before, where one of the lines will be A and the other line will be B. So, uh, since this is just temporary, we can put temporary signs. So A. B, levers like that, and then blocks along this side, blocks along this side, and then we'll just break the blocks in the middle because we don't need them, and then we'll do the glass block or slab trick where this is A, this is B, wait no, I've done that incorrect. So A, B, A, B, A, B, A, and B. And I think that's as far as I've extended them. Press down along like this, and so when we activate it, it'll cut off all the B lines like this. Uh, we're gonna need a repeater here. And when we activate the A line, it will block off all the A. So there we go. Now we'll just do the inverters, uh, so we'll do the same thing like this. I could have probably put these a bit closer together, but uh, just to make it more simple, visually simple anyway, I'm going to put them like this. So we have our pistons over here, the blocks, and then these can come out. Like this, and this will be A, and this will be B. So invert A, invert B. And these are just temporary, so that's why I'm naming them like that. So A, B, A, B, 
A, B, A, and B. Like this. And then we'll just have our repeaters over here, just like that. And so now, uh, when we toggle these lines, they should all go down. Yeah, perfect. Let's just make the rest of the inverter now. So I think it was uh, like this. So from, from our line over here, we go down one block with a repeater on one tick on top of it. And then we go up one block like this, then up a block on top of that repeater with another repeater. And then of course, when you trigger this, it goes like that. So over here, this is our input. So we're gonna place a redstone torch, block on top of that so it can feed in, so we can invert it. And block down like this. And this is the input of the thing. So as you can see, we've uninverted and then we can invert it just like that so we'll copy that for all of them like this and then we can start back on the registers after that i'm just going to copy all the blocks first it's just a bit easier break these ones because we don't need them and then repeat this down like this. Oh, it's down two ticks. It's meant to be on one. Torches like this, and redstone like that. Blocks like this. Uh, using the shift and spacebar at the same time to place those blocks without uh, messing with the repeater timings. Blocks on top like this. Oops, missed one. There we go, and then I think that's about it, yeah. So now, uh, this is just the inverters done, and they should just work, you can test them if you want. I'm not going to test them because I'm pretty sure I got every single one correct. And we can test it all at the end. And then the only thing we need to know, do now is the registers. So I think on my previous version I had the, yeah, the, oops, the inner torches on this side, so they're all in line like that. So what we're going to want to do is go up two blocks like this from this one. So one, so one block up from that and another block. And then we're going to go, oh, I think I've done this. So three blocks up instead. So like that, so we can have this in line with this. So we're gonna have one block from the torch, one block, two block, three block, four block and five block like that and on this block we're going to go down one and then of course we can have redstone dust repeat and redstone dust like that and then let's just build the rest of this register so on this side uh, we're going to want to go down like this on this one down like this on this side and redstone torch here redstone torch here and here and here, down like this, and there we go. That's just our input over here. And of course we can do the slab thing like this. Oops. So yeah, when we activate this, of course it can go up like that. And then what we want to do now is just copy this all the way down to the end. So the easiest way to do it is just these four bits first like this. I think I, no, I've been doing them wrong. Hang on. I have to go here. And now we've done this, we're going to, uh, let's just copy the redstone on top. Redstone torches behind. Repeat just like this. Oh, one tick.
And then once we've done that, we're going to go down one from here with redstone dust. Up one like that with, and um, actually we'll, we'll do that in a minute. We can do that bit last. We'll just do these down bits first. So let me just go along like this and then place them all in. There we go. And then uh, we just need the last bit, which is from this one, we can go up one like that. And let me just scoot around so I can place all the torches in. Torch, block, torch, block. Just like this, all the way down. And I think, yeah, we're at the end here. There we go. And that one's flickering, which doesn't matter too much. We can just uh, activate it like this. There we go. Uh, what block did I? Oh, well, it doesn't matter. Uh, then what we're going to want to do is just add these our lines in, of course, the starting lines with the slabs as well. These are, of course, your inputs. <laughs> we definitely need them. Oops. And I think that is almost finished. There we go. And then leave us like this, and we're just going to put the signs back on so you can see what they are. If you used World Editor, of course, if, if you used World Edit, you've probably skipped this section, but if you have used World Edit, uh, yeah, you'll already have all of this bits on, so don't worry too much about it. There you go. And now just the control wires on these, which is just like this. So A and B. And of, of course, on A, we're going to have A, B, A, B, A, B, A, and B. And then we're going to invert the lines, so they should all be off. And that is about it. So then we can just label these A and B. So this will be A, and this will be B. So there we go, we've basically finished the first section. Now on the next section, we'll just be hooking these all up back into this grid over here, adding a few more uh, ones of these so we can control the the invert, uh, I mean the cut bits, so we can either cut A or cut B. And then, and then of course we want to add the labels back. And at the very end of the video, I uh, will also make, I think it's over here, We'll make a 4-bit one, because now we've added extra, we're over 3 bits, we have to use a 4-bit one of these uh, decoders. And I think I missed, yeah, this is meant to be on one tick. And we'll also uh, include these bits in it. And then at the very, very end of the video, I will uh, probably make a computer out of this and show you uh, it actually working with possibly using these functions as well. So let's actually get work to that then. So, see you in the next section. So now that we've uh, actually just uh, made the extra bit over here, which can cut A or cut B, uh, we're actually going to want to extend these lines out and of course wire them into the system, so we can just uh, actually program them in. So what we're going to do is just do the same as we've always done over here, where we'll just extend the lines out like this, and we're going to add a few more lines, so I'm going to break these signs and re-extend them. So let me just break them real quick. And yeah, once I've done all of this, I'll show you the finished product. So let's just put repeaters in as well. So let's just extend these lines first, and then we'll do the rest. So there we go. These lines have to be extended too. Right now that these are extended, uh, we'll just bridge the gaps and uh, we're going to add four more lines, I think. Uh, yeah, 
and I'll show you what those four extra commands are going to be. Uh, we could of course do more commands than that now because these this actually gives us a lot of possibility to do. But we'll do four more lines for now and I'll show you what those commands are going to be. So let me just wire in these commands first. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, then eight, nine, ten, eleven for the extra four commands. Oh, and, and then we need A and B as well, which I'll just, uh, yeah, I'll just root at the end because uh, it's still useful to have. So A and B. And for the computer that I'm going to make, I'll just make it so when it writes to A and B, instead of, instead of uh, sending right directly down these two lines, it'll put it into the, I'll just program these two lines into the multiplexer or demultiplexer, or whatever it's called. I need to figure out which way this go around. But yeah, so we want to extend these lines out to, to our farthest one, so which would be this one, of course, because these ones are just for these two lines. And we'll, of course, do all the same we've already done. And, of course, we need to reprogram everything because we've broken several of the lines. Uh, now that we've done this, we just extend the redstone and then add the extra lines. This kind of does take a lot of time, but it's it's worth it in the end for these extra. These extra four functions can be quite useful. I've used them in several programs, so yeah. And since this is the line we last did the repeaters on for the rest, we, we can just put repeaters underneath that, like this, and we'll just do the same for these two, the new lines as well, because. Let's just do some testing by activating them. And like this, and I think, yeah, they reach about here, and I'll just put repeaters like this. And these ones reach as well. So yeah, that's, that's just perfect. Let's just break these and Extend the rest of the redstone. So this does take a bit of time as you can see and of course as I said earlier in the last video all of this section can be moved somewhere else so you don't have like a massive just a uh, thing next to your ALU. You could of course it, it just depends on how far you want to route it. You could put it on top, you could put it on below or any anywhere you really want really because all this is is just telling what it to do. And you don't you don't even need to make a big grid like this. You you can just hook up the lines uh, to the certain lines like this. I just do a grid like this because it makes the hooking up of the lines uh, a lot easier, and it just it just means they look a bit nicer and are not all over the place. Because we we don't really want it to be hard for us to program, and this just makes it a lot easier. And there we go. Now let's just, uh, we can just redo these repeaters later. Just need the rest of the redstone, like this. And we can add the program in. So this is, this may take a while to add all these lines, it's uh, slightly annoying. And this is A, and this is B, like this. I'm just going to extend them one out, so they're in line with these two over here. And then, uh, once we've done this, uh, I'm going to pin the decoder lines like this. And then we'll program it and then start work on the decoder. There you go. And all of these uh, should be active except these ones, so we'll add torches. Because the lines right here, we have to add the, the repeater behind it. Ooh. 
and that should just reach yet. Yeah, perfect. So now that we've done this, uh, we'll get on to the programming. So let me, let me just run my program and we can start working on this now. Now that we've uh, added the extra lines, we're actually going to need to all reprogram them all. So first of all, let's just start on the f very first line. We're actually not going to need to do anything to this line because it's just uh, sum. Uh, of course, let's add the signs as well. So sum uh, a minus b. B minus A, we'll just have to add the signs first just because it makes it a bit easier to program. And when you're looking back at your computer, it's always good to know what all your bits are. So XOR, and then it was OR, oops, OR, then NOR. And this was going to be our NOT function, but now we have these extra lines, we can put a proper NOT function in. So we can do not a or invert a and not b and then of course we can also do plus one to a or i'll just say a plus one a plus one and over here b plus one and these these lines are if i'll, I'll show a program off with these lines in but it's basically say you wanted to uh, say you had a counter, all oh, those signs are weird, entities I guess, uh, say you had a counter inside your program, so you wanted to increment by one each time, uh, that's what you'd use over here. Of course it'd also be useful if you had a minus one fe feature, but I'm sure there's a, quite an easy way to do that as well. You can just uh, put in a negative number and flip it around to positive, as a, there's, there's probably a way to just minus one like that. But uh, we, uh, plus one is just as useful because uh, you can do, uh, you can have a loop. So when the ALU output equals, or well, or certain register equals this certain number, then stop the loop. So basically it'll just count up. So it'll do one loop, then another loop, then another loop until it reaches the final number. And uh, then it will cut off. And whenever you do those extra loops, you of course need to add one to the number. So yeah, to increment the counter. And that's what you can do with these lines over here. So of course, these, these lines are right to register A and right to register B. So right to register A, right to register B. And then this is uh, invert. A invert B uh, cut A cut B because that's what the lines are doing. They'll just cut off the certain line. Then this one I think was uh, and then this one is if I can let me just check real quick. Uh, this one goes down here and this goes to the plus one. So carry in. Plus one. Then we have uh, this line over here, which I think goes to uh, the cut carry over here. So let's just program that in. So this will be cut carry. This will be, uh, let's see, where does it go? This goes to these lines over here, which is the uh, cut ALU. So what was it? I think it was. Uh, let's see, bypass adders. Then this is just invert the output. And then ALU out. And of course, for all of them, we're going to want to have ALU out. So let's just put ALU out on all of them. And then te technically you could just uh, hard code this so it's always on or it will always turn on whenever you put one in but but this is just another way to do it so it's always on and this this just makes it a bit simpler so you don't have to root extra lines you, you can just do it included in the program it just means you'll have to put the redstone torch down for every single one of them which can be a bit tedious but it it'll just work so it doesn't really matter too much so there we go that's the most of it done we just need to put the lines in 
So this line was fine. This line, we uh, broke one of them and we need to put that back in. So we just need to add the, so for what was it? A minus B, we want invert B, I think. So yeah, this is our invert line. So invert B on B minus A, we want invert A, which is this line over here. Uh, let's see what else used the invert. Uh, I think that was it basically. Oh yeah, and then for our nor we have invert the output. Yeah, I think that was it. That that's the only things that use these lines over here, the invert. So now that we've done that, we can actually work on the rest of this. So let's just see what we haven't programmed. Yet. So we haven't programmed these in. So these these are quite simple. And so first of all, we want to do not a, which is just as simple as inverting a so we're going to find which is this one and we'll just invert it so where did i put it so not a and we'll invert a which is this one over here and then what we're also going to want to do if we're inverting a we also want to cut the b so we're going to cut b so that means uh, b will not give an input whatsoever then then to pass a input fully through we can just, uh, let's see, I think we can just do sum because it's it's not, it's adding itself to zero anyway. So it won't actually make a difference. So that's all we need to do for that one. And then let's just try it out to make sure. So if we put in the number uh, 1010 into A, like this and then we put a random number into b so let's just put uh, this number into b because b is being cut that random number should not interfere at all so then if we uh not a or invert a we should be getting what we put into a which was 1010 as the output so let's see so we hmm, did i even trigger it properly so zero, zero, zero. I don't think I actually triggered it. So let's just uh, go back again and let's write to A again. So I think I was trying to write this number. Let's just do that real quick. Make sure it's in A now. So what's the number? Yes. So now we should see an incorrect output. So why is that? Aha, that's because I forgot to invert these. So over here for the inversions, did I f do it correct? I'm just trying to figure out. So this is inverted. This is not inverted, but it's blocked. Uh, the ones that, so for a zero, it's inverted. Ah, over here, I forgot to add the repeaters. There we go. So now we should be getting the correct answer. There we go. So yeah, so that works. And then if we just put in something else for it, so let's say one, 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 we should be getting zero, 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 zero. So that, that was just a mistake I made while rebuilding it. So yeah, hopefully you'll get that. So there we go, perfect. And then we shouldn't even get an overflow because nothing's been going through. So there we go. Now let's program invert B. So that's just the same thing we're gonna do. So we're gonna invert B. We're going to trigger the invert B line. We're also going to, again, instead of doing the B, we'll do the A instead. So we're going to, so this is invert A and, and cut B. We're going to cut B, I mean cut A and invert B. And then, yeah. So if we test it out, we should be getting the number yeah, this number because we put these ones as one and it's just inverted. Perfect. So if, if we put in the number 1111, we should be getting 0000. So of course it's in B. There we go. And if we put in the number 0000, we should be getting the number 1111. Showing that the inversions work properly for once. <laughs> Instead of doing a nor, we can use this and it will properly invert it without, it will just invert one of them and we won't actually 
uh, even if there's a number in the other register, it won't matter at all because we have these blocking things, which means we can get a proper output without any corruption. So now that we've done that, we just want to do these little ones. Which, so we're going to do A plus 1 and B plus 1. So for A plus 1, we're just going to want to do uh, sum, which is nothing on it. We're also going to want to block B. So for A plus 1, which is over here, we'll do block B, which is uh, this one over here. So block B, and for B plus 1, we're going to do block A. Oh, of, of course, we also need to activate the carry in line, which is this one down here. Of course, like the last video, I'll include this all in the description, so if you didn't really get me programming this in, which you probably won't because I've been kind of all over the place, uh, you'll be able to just read off the description and it will show you where to put the torches and everything. So yeah, now that we've done that, let's just uh, let's just put a random number into A. So if we put the number 1 into A, and then we do, and uh, let's just put a random number into B as well. So if we put the number 5 into B, if we do A plus 1, we should be getting the output 2, because we put 1 in A. And as you can see, since B is being blocked off, the number 5 in B doesn't get interfered at all. And say we do B plus 1, we should be getting the number 6. There we go, perfect. So that's basically uh, all of this extra functions added. So we added the uh, not A, not B, A plus 1 and B plus 1. And now the last thing to do is just to add uh, the encoder over here. So yeah, we'll just do that right now. So now that we've uh, programmed everything in, we want to add a multiplexer. I'm pretty sure it's called a multiplexer. <laughs> it might be called a demultiplexer. But basically, we want to turn binary into base 10, or so we can output into this. Uh, so we can input with binary, and it will trigger the right line. So what we're going to want to do is just extend these out a bit, and we'll of course want to do the same thing as we did last time. Let me, let me see if everything's correct. Yeah, there we go. Where, but instead of doing three lines like we did last time, since we've added some, we'll actually need four lines. And I'm just going to do the same uh, slow-ish design that I've done earlier. Uh, there is a different design that you can do by spacing them two out and then doing a thing, but it just makes it a bit bigger. And also, uh, speed-wise, it doesn't have to be fast because I will be making a computer with this to show off those extra new functions that I've done in this video. However, I just don't think it needs to be fast. I can just speed the video up if the computer takes really long to do anything. So it, I don't think it matters at all. So we'll, we'll just make it slow anyway. So let's let's just do that. So what we're going to want to do is these will be our inputs over here. And then we're going to want to extend these lines across all the way to the end. And of course, this time I'm including right A and right B because uh, actually, I have to do. I have to do a little trick on these, uh, which I'll show you real quick, because they only need to be. They don't need to be uh, constantly on like these ones, whereas uh, the other lines do. So let's just finish this up. There you go, and then we'll just add all of these bits as we've done last time. There we go. Oopsies. And now that we've done this, I'll just break the ones down the middle because we don't need them. And yeah, just, just be careful when breaking these blocks so you don't accidentally break any necessary blocks. I'm not breaking all of them. I'll just go back and do them all. Because you, you don't want to accidentally break some important block in your design.
There we go. And now we'll just put the repeaters in as we've done before. So it goes redstone, repeaters, then let's just do put all the repeaters in first, then we'll put all the redstone in. And this, this does definitely make the design a lot slower because of having all these repeaters in. But of course, as I've said already, it really just doesn't matter. We're, it's just a kind of a proof of concept thing. So now that we've done this, let's program it in. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, have I done that correct? Hang on a minute. I think I've done something incorrect. So, there we go. So, 9, 10, 11 is like this. I just did it wrong by accident. 12 and 13. So we have 13 lines in total, which is why we use 4 bits instead. And we, we can do up to 16 lines with 4 bits. You can do up to 32 lines with uh, 5 bits, and etc, etc. It just doubles each time you add an extra bit. It's just quite useful. Oh, you know what? I, I'm not going to add these yet. Let me just break them real quick, because we need to add the other bits first. And just having it like this will make it easier. So let's just put the torches in. So torches on all the blocks that don't have a resident torch on top of them. Oops. So you, you may have uh, spotted a program, in, program, I mean pattern while I'm doing this. As you can see, it goes 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0 on the first column. On the second column it goes 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0. And on the third column it goes 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. So since this is 4 bits, it skips 4 each time. Since this is 2 bits, it'll skip 2 each time. Since this is 1 bit, it'll skip 1 each time. And of course the 8 bit one will skip 8 each time. So of course since I haven't got a 0, it starts on 1. But if I had a 0, the pattern would make a lot more sense. But yeah. So let me just add the other torches in. So here we go. Now that I've done that, we just need that. add the blocks on top of these torches. This is the reason why I haven't put those bits yet, so you can just see it a bit easier. And of course the torches in front of those blocks. So we have a double knot gate, so inverting it, then inverting it again back to normal, where these are just inverted. And all this is, is kind of, it's almost kind of like a combination lock. So it's just, uh, all it does will, it'll only turn off, turn this line off anyway, when it gets the correct combination, which is quite useful. So there we go. And then torches on these. Did I put torch there? No, I didn't. Oh, uh, and then just these ones over here. So blocks on these ones. Oh, this video is going to be a long one. I can already feel it. Oh dear. I'm probably saying this like half an hour in. But yeah, it's, it's nearly all finished. And then we just need these bits on top. Like this. And we'll just do this on all of them. And I've done the stupid thing again where I've done torches. I actually just need to do a block like this and a repeater. But I'll, I'll just do that in a minute. We'll, we'll just complete all of this first. Because I, I forgot that these lines have to also be inverted. So there we go. And now that we've done this, we're just going to... Put redstone on top of all of this. So mine, uh, make sure you don't accidentally hit the repeaters while doing this, because that would be unfortunate. And once we've done all of this, we can work on the next section. 
There you go. And of course we can try them all out, but first of all I'm just gonna fix it by going... Uh, we can leave these blocks in because they have the signs. Let me just place a block on all of this. And then break the torches here, because we're going to place repeaters instead. Did I accident? No, that was just all accidentally broke. Repeaters like this. And then blocks like this. And there we go. Uh, that's all the lines inverted again, and of course we can have our combinations like this. So one, oops, two, four, and eight. And then there's only one more thing we have to do, which is on these two lines like this, uh, we're going to want to make it so it's only a short pulse. So the way I'm going to do that is, let me just make the pulse module up from here and then I'll root it down. So what we can do is, uh, let's see, so if we destroy all of this for now, I think the way we can do this is by going up. Of course, these repeaters need to be on two ticks, I completely forgot. Uh, so it means that while they're switching through it, it won't accidentally activate them. These repeaters, however, we're going to set to four ticks just to make sure it's perfectly safe and of course we let's just add another set of repeaters back here on four ticks as well for a bit of delay got one like this on both of them one across like this repeater on two ticks actually no this repeater has to be on uh four ticks should do look like this Torch here, torch here, blocks like this, arrowstone torches like this. And what we're making here is basically a pulse circuit. So as you can see, it's off at the moment. So this is our output. And when this line turns off, or I must have not inverted it. So let's let's try that again. So when this line turns off, oh, I've I've done I've 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 messed it up. Hang on, let, let, let me just fix it real quick. I for, I think I forgot to invert it. Uh, let me see how I'm gonna invert it now. Uh, uh, there we go. I think. Yeah, there we go. We'll we'll just we'll just do this, and instead we'll we'll have a repeat on four ticks like this. So we don't accidentally have any unwanted signal. So there we go. Instead of uh, because that if we didn't have this, it would mess up the rising edge and falling edge of this, and it might potentially break the circuit. So now, as you can see, when it's deactivated, when it's activated, it won't do anything. When it's deactivated, it will only give out a short pulse, not a continuous signal like these ones when they're deactivated. So say, say I deactivate this, as you can see, the signal's gonna be off until I turn it back on. Where on this case, it's, of course it's inverted, when I deactivate it, the signal will only have a short pulse. And the reason we do this is because these are registers and they only need a short pulse to activate and save the number. And this just makes it easier for when we're building the computer or implementing it into a computer, we only want a short pulse like this. So now that we've done this, uh, I'm just going to use glass for this because it works quite well. We're just going to go down like this. And I think this is A and this is B. So for the A line, we can go up like this. And for the B line, oh, we could actually just use solid blocks for this, I guess. And I'll go like this just because it looks nicer. And for the B line, which is this one over here. We'll just go like this, so down one. And I think, aha, uh -huh, slight bomb. Let's just go around like this way instead. There we go. So here we go. 
Now that we've done this, oh, we're going to need to actually add proper repeaters. So we have the last repeaters are here. So we're going to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So that's just about right. But what we're going to do, uh, just to add a bit of signal, because our torches are here, we can just add as many repeaters down here as we want. Since we need a bit of delay, I'm just going to add four repeaters down like this. And for now, I'm just going to set the first one to one tick and the others can just be one. I mean, the first ones to four ticks and the others just can be one tick. Uh, but on your computer, you're going to want to either add repeaters or just uh, increment these. Because when you actually make a computer, uh, you'll realize that when the CPU activates the registers, so it's, it's going to want to save, it's going to, first of all, it's going to read from the RAM, right? And then it's going, and this will ha all happen on the same cycle. So you want to read from RAM and also put the information from RAM right into the, the ALU registers. And you want to do this in one CPU cycle. And since the CPU registers, I mean the ALU registers might be faster to activate than the RAM, you're going to be getting it will just save whatever's on the data the data bus at the current time. So if the RAM uh, data hasn't reached this before it saves, then you're going to have an issue of this not actually saving what uh, you wanted to save. So that's why you put a bit of delay on it to make sure that the, the uh, memory or whatever, the data from the RAM actually reaches these registers before they activate. And they only activate for a burst let me just add that, uh, meaning that just for a, a short burst. So it means when you go into your next cycle, you won't, and the RAM turns off, you won't be accidentally saving something else on the data bus, which could corrupt the registers. So that's why they wait for the RAM uh, memory or whatever data to come into the registers. Then they activate, saving whatever is in it. And then, yeah, then on the next cycle after that, you can do whatever really you want. So that's why you add repeaters like that. So this is basically done now. And of course we can try it out over here. So say, let's just do, uh, let's put a number into A, then let's add one to A. So let's put the number, for instance, three into A. So A was, uh, let's, let's actually add the binary values as well so I can remember them. So one will be uh, uh, one, Two will be O O one O. Three will be and then four will be oops five which will be O one O one six which is O one one O seven which is uh, oops, uh, one, 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 eight, nine, oops, one, uh, one, ten, which is one, uh, one, uh, eleven, which is one, oh, uh, one, one, yep, twelve, which is one, one, oh, uh, oh, uh, Oops. And then 13. 1, 1. 13, which is 1, 1, oh, 1. There we go. So, <laughs> finally. So, since this is a uh, right to A, which we no longer have signs for, we should add signs again. Uh, but for now, it doesn't matter. So, this is right to A. So, we're going to activate this on the things over here. So, let's just activate that real quick. So also what you may want to do is on your inputs, oops, you may want to do extend them out like this. And then we can go down one again. And this will be where your actual inputs are. And I'll, I'll show you the reason why we do this. And that's because while you're actually inputting the input, if you're clicking the different levers, uh, you, you can't do them all at the same time, so it might flicker through them. So what this does is basically just 
means we do them all at the same time. And then we can even make it uh, look fancy and add redstone lamps. There we go. So, then of course down one again. One, two, four, and eight. And then over here, we can just go up a bunch like this. And then have a stick piston line like this. Where basically, uh, do I have a button? Yes, I do. Oh, I needed that wrist and torch. Hang on a minute. Where this button will basically just put it here. Uh, send data. And when we activate this, it'll just send whatever we've got programmed down. Oh, actually. Now that I'm thinking about this, this might have to be a lever, not a button. So yeah, we can tell it to send. So, of course, I was trying to input the number into the number 3 into register A. So let's select the code for register A. And now that we've done this, let's uh, send the data down. And so it should have done that now. Uh, 1, 2, yeah, 3. And of course B has something else in it. But that doesn't matter at the moment. So now, let's do A plus 1, which is... Let's find A plus 1, which is this one. And A plus 1 is 1010. So 1010. And then let's do that. And then we should see 3 plus 1, which is 4. And there we go. That's, that's why you use all of this for. And it just means it makes it a lot easier with only having 4 lines instead of like however many lines your A or U will have, and it just reduces it down. So in your computer, you only need to store four different numbers instead of like 20 different numbers or whatever. All it is, is just a very simple way to stop uh, lines like this. So this is basically a computer that I have over here, and each of these over here is just an instruction on my computer. And as you can see, there's quite a large amount of instructions so far. We have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 instructions on, uh, yeah, this was an April Fool's video that I did, uh, 18 instructions on a very simple 4-bit computer. A very small 4-bit computer has 18 instructions already, where a computer like this that's, uh, of course I multiplexed them, but so I had separate instructions for each of my A or U commands. I'd have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 extra instructions instead of 4. And as far as I'm aware, 4 is a smaller number than 11, and 4 uh, is going to be less instructions than 11, making your uh, computer smaller in total. So that's, that's why you'd uh, multiplex and demultiplex things like this. So yeah, uh, now that that's done, let me go whip up a computer real quick uh, with this ALU in it and show you what it can actually do. Because as far as you've seen, all you've seen is me actually just testing the ALU out. Oops. But let's actually put a, make a computer with it in. I'll also include a world download, of course. And then we can run a simple program, say like multiplication or maybe addition or something on it. And I'll show you this ALU in action. So over here, what I have is I've just copied uh, my 4-bit uh, computer that I made a while ago. I've done a tutorial on this and everything. And I've just copied it over here using a program called Amulet World Editor, which is still in development. But yeah, I've just, I used it to copy it over here. I could have probably done it with command blocks, but I just decided to use the program, it's a bit easier. And as you can see, it already has an ALU in it. So this ALU, only can do plus or minus and yes I've done the adders twice where I could have just done one and used a, a special inversion tool to do it but that doesn't matter so what I'm going to do over here if hopefully I'm not gonna have to change too much from my ALU and hopefully this is uh, the, mo the least significant bit over on this side and not the other way around let me just check so this is the bit that I want to be one let's just check if that is one Hopefully it's not four. Uh, 
I'm not. Oh yeah, do I? There we go. Eight. So that is a slight problem. Well, what we could do is either just reverse the way around it goes, so all the data will be reversed or something, or I could just reverse the way around the AOU actually goes, which is over here. And it isn't too, too hard, it's just uh, annoying. I'll just have to reverse the way it goes. Uh, but I might just reverse the way the data goes. I, th I think that'll be easier, so I won't have to modify the ALU. And then one other thing I'm going to have to do, as you can see, the input's coming from here and the output's come out from here. Well, on this ALU, it does the same thing. Input's from this side, output's from that side. So I won't have to... Actually, yeah, yeah. If the inputs are coming from this side, our outputs from this side, I'm going to have to rotate it around, which can be done with commands or struct blocks. So that's what I'll do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut all this ALU out, put in the new one, and then the only other thing I may have to do is add some more program lines. However, the program lines we already have for this ALU is over here we have ALU B and ALU A registers and then we also have these two lines over here which are add and subtract oops I don't know what happened right there that's weird however I don't actually need uh, add or subtract or A or B since I only have four bits input on that ALU I can take these four lines and convert them to those four bits so I'll just uh, change the program to work with those four bits instead and that means this entire LU can be completely replaced with that one over there. It doesn't really matter too much about space because as you can see these lines come down this way anyway so I can extend if the ALU is a bit bigger like maybe up to here for instance it doesn't matter because the lines uh, go back in right here anyway so it won't matter and also by using this computer I also have a lot of uh, 16 lines of uh, ROM and for memory locations and a display so I can easily show you as well as a adjustable clock so if I use this it's just a lot easier instead of rebuilding a whole new computer I'll just do a swap so yeah that's what I'll do so I basically uh, finished making this over here and what I did I just basically took this computer copy and pasted it over there with a program so in in the old computer remove the old one just by breaking it manually copied and pasted the new one and also I had to also rotate it as you can see the inputs are coming in from this way and the programming things over here where on this one over here the inputs come from this way and the programming lines over here I, I just rotated it uh, uh, 90 degrees anti-clockwise or counterclockwise so yeah that's that's what I did over here and there was I, I basically had to add a lot of things to this computer to get it fully functional. As you can see, there are several extras and I've replaced some of the bits and changed them around a bit. So there's a lot has, and as you can see, extra lines on the program. So a lot has been done to this computer uh, to make it functional for this ALU. One of the things uh, that I've actually had to do, I've created a massive board over here, is one, well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bugs on this computer that I found and had to fix, which was quite annoying. I also had to change up all the timings a bit to the different components, make them a lot slower and stuff, just so I can debug it and make sure it all works. As well, I just made some of the timings slower because I want to make sure it works perfectly, so I've made all the timings slower and stuff. They, they can definitely be made faster, but if you're gonna want to make them faster, of course, this will be in a world download. If you want to make it faster, you'll have to adjust the timings yourselves because, yeah, I, I really can't be bothered. It's just going to take a bit too long. And seeing as this computer is only a very special use case just to demonstrate one certain type of program with this one certain type of ALU, I, I just didn't really think there was much point. Of course, this computer will also be in the world download with the ALUs, so you'll be able to use it. And one of the things I have added is conditional branching. And all I have done is if the ALU equals ROM, then branch. I've also added a program. So all these uh, extra lines are basically to do with the conditional and also just lighting up this lamp over here. I've added ALU overflow indicator. I've added uh, 
clear ARU registers because I think that was over here, but I moved it to here because I had to redo some bits. Uh, clear RAM, update display, clock once. Made the clock a bit bigger, and I've also I was adjusting it to make it slower for all the components to work because I've made several of the components a lot slower. And yeah, of course, just the ALU I've had to. As you can see, this part over here, I added the timings this, uh, because that's what I was showing what it could do. This, this is why you use the ALU bit so it won't send like random signals down the data bus because basically. Whenever you make a computer, you want the data bus to only really have the bits you need on it at once, so it's easier to debug. And yeah, that's that's what that is for. Because it could have random bits going down it, but if it just uh, it's annoying when you're debugging it to have like just random lines flashing occasionally. Then I had to fix a few of the RAM lines. There was a few blocks broken and stuff. And yeah, the, there was a lot of debugging I had to do. But basically, I've programmed a multiplication program on it. And it works quite well. It's it's admittedly quite slow, but it function it uses a lot of the functions of the ARU, uh, especially the ones we added, and it it just works. So without further ado, let's just show it off. And I'm going to be doing the number three. So three on here. So one plus two is three. Three times three. So three multiplied by three. And the second number input goes in here over here. So these four bits. Uh, are the second number input and the first number inputs here. So uh, this is a really dodgy multiplication program that I've written. It's a very simple one. I've, I've got it down here and it has a lot of flaws like if you multiply the number by zero or multiply it by one it'll just not work and of course it doesn't have overflow detection either. You'll just yeah. So it's, it's just a very simple demonstration. So this is the uh, program if you want to pause the video and see it I'll probably uh, write it out a bit better and link it in the description but yeah that's that's basically the program and it's really dodgy but it, it basically works so if I just demonstrate it by first of all turning the computer on and of course I've had to add a few more circuits because of some errors I'll, I'll make a whole video uh, updating how this all works and stuff so the computer's on it's executed the first line of code and then we just turn the clock off clock on even because it's inverted and we'll basically just see uh, 3 times 3 which should equal 9 so let's just it's, it's gonna take a while basically so I won't need to fast forward it I mean I won't need to speed it up or anything because it's not too too long but as you can see it has several lines of program and it's gonna take a long time so the multiplication program that I've used is well of course written by myself that's what's so bad but uh, the way I've done it is through repeated addition. So the way three times three works is it basically adds three to three uh, three times. But that that kind of doesn't make sense. But it basically uh, it, it basically just works by adding the same number to itself over and over again till you get the final answer. So yeah, there we go. It's thrown up nine, which is the final answer. And eventually it should calculate that it has the final answer because it has a, a counter program in it as well. So that's what we use the plus one for. I'll show it all off in detail. And then eventually, yeah, there we go. Program end. It's uh, done the branch and now it's on the final line, which basically indicates to go back on itself. So the program has effectively halted and there we get the answer for 3 times 3 so let's just turn it off real quick and let me just uh, clear everything so I can go over the program a bit and as you can see uh, it in the program we use the if we go over to program we use uh, addition over here so addition and we also use the plus one command so I think I've forgotten what line it is, but there's a there's a line where we have to plus one to A while there's still numbers in B, and that's why uh, this addition to the ALU where we added the these four functions over here. So the over here, I think. Let's see. So where we added A plus one and B plus one, as well as not A and not B. These are quite useful, and I do use them in the program. Well, at least just one of them in the program. So that is why you might want to use 
uh, something. So for like addition, where you, or anything that has a counter in any program that has a counter in, you're gonna need uh, this uh, modification to the ALU. So yeah, as per usual, I'll leave this ALU, uh, well, the old ALU, the newer, newer, improved ALU, and this computer all in one world in a world download in the description. So yeah, I guess, well, that's it, I guess, well, uh, before I go, let's just try out a different number multiplied. So let's just do, uh, let's do two times four, for instance. So the best way for, to make it faster is you put the smaller number in here in the ROM and the bigger number, which is your second number in the, in the program ROM over here. So two times four, we said, so let's just do, so two times four. So let's put four in. So at the moment it's on three and we need torch on four. Oops. So let's put the number four in. And now if I just, let me just clock it once to reset some stuff just in case. And then if we turn the computer on, just wait for a bit till it, so it can execute the first command because I had a bit delay to the RAM. And then let's start the clock. It should do two times four, which will equal eight. So it's, it's going to take a while because of the way I wrote the program and because of the computer so slow, but it should eventually do it. So line one, line two, line three, it's on line three. So line four, well, of course this is line zero. So this is technically, so zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. So it, it goes quite fast. I think, yeah, there we go. So the program's already calculated the answer out and it should branch in a minute when it hits this line over here. So it should detect that it's uh, done the multiplication branch and over here, this line basically just tells it to uh, tell the program is ended. So there we go. Let's just turn it off real quick and let's reset some of the stuff. And uh, yeah, basically the way it works is it adds the same number to itself and it also has a counter saying how many times it's added that number to itself. So that's how it keeps track of how many times it uh, has. And this uh, is the branch. It just uses a very simple comparator design over here. So this is just an XOR gate all linked up to each other by one line. And when the ALU equals whatever's in the XOR gates, uh, it will tell it to branch and that's that's how it works. So yeah, I guess uh, Hopefully this computer kind of helped you can download it of course and play around with it see how this ALU is uh, Better in than the old ALU in it. Of course you can do multiplication and stuff but Yeah, I guess please like and subscribe and I am out